What are aggregates? Well, they're a collection of domain objects that form a boundary. I talk a lot about boundaries on this channel, and aggregates are just another way to define them. I'll explain how I think about aggregates, how I design them, and an example in code. Hey everybody, it's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design, so if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. So for this example, I'm going to be using the concept of a shipment. You could think of this as even food delivery, like a food delivery order, and that would be our shipment. So you have somebody that is going to go and pick up the food. That's going to be a stop. That's your first stop, this pickup. And then the second stop is the delivery where you're dropping off the food at, say, somebody's house. So that's the example I'm going to be using throughout this. So the key thing about a stop, whether it's a pickup or a delivery, is there's three initial states. The first state is going to be in transit. That means that we are on our way to a particular stop, whether that be even something down the line in the future. The next state is arrived. That means that we arrived at the particular stop and we are either doing our pickup or our delivery. Departed states means we left and we're on our way to the next stop. So those are our three states that a stop can be in. So here's what that flow would actually look like of those tra state transitions for our pickup and our delivery. So this first starts our pickup, the last stop here is our delivery, and both are in an in-transit state. The flow of this is gonna be that the first stop, the pickup, is gonna, then we're gonna arrive, then we're gonna depart, then we're gonna arrive the delivery, then we're gonna depart delivery. And at this point, our shipment is done. So how do aggregates help? Well, as I mentioned at the very beginning, is that they are a collection of domain objects. And as I've shown, we actually kind of have three. We have our shipment itself, and we have two types of stops. We have a pickup stop and a delivery stop. And the way I like to think about uh, aggregates in themselves is that can stops the pickup and delivery live without the shipment? Intuitively, you might think immediately, no, they can't because the actual stops are directly related to the shipment. And that's true. However, the real kind of more deep-seated reason why you want to use an aggregate here are because of invariants. Invariants are business rules that must always be consistent. So this means that our collection of domain objects, our aggregate, need to maintain that consistency and apply those business rules. So the business rules for our shipment really revolve around the stops. Now the thing is, is that I mentioned that the stops have this state transition of going from in transit, arrived, departed. Now we can uh, apply that uh, business rule to the stop itself to make sure that it goes through um, this progression. However, what happens if we have our two stops and we know that we have to go from in transit, arrived, departed, but what happens if we try to do that on the delivery before the pickup? Well, we can't do that. But the problem here is that the delivery and the pickup don't know about each other. So the way to enforce this invariant of that a stop has to go through a state progression, but as well as the order of the stops have to be through a certain progression, meaning we have to do our pickup first, then the delivery, is through our aggregate. And our aggregate's gonna consist of the shipment and the stops. Now the key point here is that our shipment becomes the aggregate root. Now the aggregate root is what I like to think of as the gateway, meaning all the interactions and everything that we're gonna expose in terms of methods or behaviors are gonna be done on the shipment. No other calling code or consumers are gonna be uh, directly interacting with the stops. They have to do it through the shipment. All the source code I'm about to show is available to my developer level members of my channel. If you want more information about joining, go to my channel and click the join button. All right, so the first thing to look at is actually our stops. So I have this abstract class of a stop. It has a stop ID, a status, which is gonna be in transit, arrived or departed, and then a sequence. So in what order the stops are, because this is gonna be in a collection. So. Our first method that we have is arrive. If we are not in transit, meaning we've already arrived or departed, then we're gonna basically throw an exception. If we're good, then we'll set our status as arrived. And then on depart, if we have already de departed, we'll throw an exception there. And then if we're in a in, uh, transit state, that means that we haven't arrived yet. So we're gonna throw under that circumstance. Otherwise, we're gonna mark our status as departed. So then I have two classes that implement that abstract class. I've defined a pickup stop and a delivery stop. So all these rules are enforcing the transition of a particular stop, but the real problem now is to make sure that these transition happen to the right stops in the right order. Again, meaning that we're doing this to the pickup before we're doing any of these actions to delivery. And the way we can do that is through the shipment, through our aggregate route. So the shipment has a constructor that takes our list of stops, and this is just gonna be, in our simple example, the pickup and the delivery. 
Now we have a few different methods and the most important one to start off with is arrive because this is the thing that's actually gonna make sure that we're doing them in the right order. So when you pass in the stop ID of what stop you wanna arrive from, um, what we're doing is we're looking at all the stops to see, okay, at what particular sequence of that stop we're at. So if we're at, for example, the pickup of our current stop and it's sequence one, are there any other stops in that collection that haven't been departed? If there are, that means that we're not in the current stop that needs to arrive. So we'll throw an exception. So what this does is that if you try to arrive on say the delivery before the actual pickup is even completed, meaning it's in a departed state, then we're gonna throw an exception. This is what's controlling that invariant to make sure that we're doing all the state transitions to stops in the right order. So if we get by that and we are in the correct stop that we can do the arrive, we're gonna call current stop arrive, which is what we looked at earlier um, to make sure that we um, are in the right state for that particular stop, and then we change its actual status. So back to the shipment, we also have the pickup, which is doing something very similar. So just getting out the actual stop, we're checking to see if that stop is actually a pickup. If it's not, we're gonna throw, and then we're gonna call the depart on the stop, which we already looked at as well. And then on the deliver method, same type of thing as uh, the pickup. We're just getting out the stop that was passed in for the stop ID, making sure it's a delivery, and then calling to part on the actual stop. So to kind of illustrate how this all works from like a consumer client point of view, I have some tests here where I'm creating a new shipment and I'm just giving it my list of stops, which are gonna be my pickup and my delivery. So stop ID one's the pickup, sequence one, stop IDs two is the delivery, sequence two. And my one test is I'm gonna do the arrive, the pickup, the arrive, the delivery in the correct order. And then I have this method on the aggregate uh, route, the shipment itself uh, called is complete, where it just checks to see that all the stops are in a departed state, because if they are, then that means that our shipment is complete. So returning true. And then I have a variety of tests that do all this um, logic around the invariance. For example, that you cannot pick up without arriving. So I just have my ship up, uh, my shipment, which I'm trying to do the pickup uh, on stop one, but I haven't arrived it yet. So that's going to throw our exception. The same thing with all those different uh, cases that I was showing in the actual implementation. I have a test for every one of them. When I'm designing aggregates, I'm thinking about invariants and specifically how we handle those invariants that span multiple domain objects like our stop. The stop itself can make sure that it goes through the right state transitions, but it's our aggregate and our shipment that makes sure that the stops or the collection of stops are done in the correct order. My recommendation for designing aggregates is to always be in a consistent and valid state. Don't expose domain objects that can't enforce all the business rules. Always be in a consistent and valid state. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any thoughts or questions, make sure to leave a comment. And as always, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe for more videos on software architecture and design. Thanks.